This is Mark Montemare with Environmental Sport Coatings and the Court Store. While this video gives specific instructions on how to apply sport coatings to a single tennis court with two colors, uh, the basic techniques and applications are the same for virtually any sport surface. I think you'll find the old adage, uh, a picture's worth a thousand words, is certainly true in this case. I could write a manual on court surfacing and I just don't think it would be nearly as effective as actually watching do-it-yourselfers and professionals applying these sport coatings. The first step in preparation for the inbounds color coatings is to lay masking paper around the inbounds perimeter. I recommend you lay 24 inch masking paper uh, across one baseline uh, and the reason will be clear uh, a little later in the video. The paper should be secured on both sides with two inch masking tape. On this end, you'll see that he's going to split that baseline in half with the outer edge of his masking tape. We use the pails to help secure the paper on a windy day. Uh, even with the tape down, sometimes the wind uh, can blow the paper off the cord and you'll have to start over. By the way, the guy pulling the tape is my son Greg. He has absolutely no interest in tennis courts whatsoever, but he's always a tremendous help when he comes out with us. As you reach the end, cut the paper and tape it down. Once the 24 inch paper is finished on this baseline, you can then lay the 8 inch masking paper around the other three sides. Uh, you, it's the same technique, the only difference is you don't need to, to place buckets on this. Uh, the two edges of tape seem to be plenty to, to secure the paper. One minor step, uh, make a little plug out of a wad of masking tape or paper and stick it in your center anchor hole. If you're planning on preserving your existing uh, tennis court line measurements, you may want to place a tack at uh, these locations that I'm showing on this diagram. Another way to do it is to uh, take a Phillips head screwdriver or a drill and actually create little dimples at these same intersections. Now it's time to mix the color coating. You'll want to stir each pail very well with a drill-powered mixing paddle. Uh, you'll find a certain amount of sand settles to the bottom, so you'll want to blend this with the rest of the coating very well before you start the application. A typical inbounds will use five five-gallon pails of color, but I recommend you mix seven pails uh, you definitely don't want to run out right at the end, so it's good to have the extra pails mixed up uh, and it certainly doesn't hurt anything. Once they're mixed, uh, you can see from this video how we're placing the pails. Two at the baseline, uh, one at the, the next service line, another one right at the net line, 
and then the next one he'll place at the other service line the last two you're going to place right uh, on the the 24 inch paper this is the end you'll finish your coat you'll start at the end farthest from the 24 inch paper and finish on the paper once your pails have been placed you're ready to apply the first coat of color spread your uh, two pails out across the baseline uh, fairly evenly You can start squeegeeing almost anywhere. Uh, you'll notice he's not at an end, he's kind of in the middle. The important thing is to move that coating over onto the tape and the paper. Uh, you can go as far over as you want, uh, but you do want to get it completely uh, onto the tape. Uh, he'll come to this corner and then he'll pull down the line again keeping the paint uh, on the paper or the tape uh, he's almost right there missing the tape but he just got it uh, once he's gone to that corner he'll go back all the way across uh, again the same principle get the coating up on the tape or the paper all the way down the line the first couple of passes are never very neat, uh, but that will take care of itself as you move down the court. Once you're a couple of passes uh, beyond the start, the technique or squeegee pattern that you will use will be the same all the way down the court until you reach the other end. You'll notice he's pulling out uh, what we call a tail, a real long strip along the side. He's going to turn around. Uh, there's a little ridge on the paper that he'll pick up as he comes back. Uh, and as he comes back, when he gets to the point where his row of coating is, he'll make a sharp turn and then walk straight down to the other side. To contrast our do-it-yourselfers, I want to show you a, a few clips of a professional. Number one, they only place paper, the 24-inch paper, at one end. They're able to stay inside of the lines when they squeegee, so they don't need to place paper around the entire court. Uh, way too much to ask of a, a new do-it-yourselfer uh, to try to stay inside those two-inch lines. They also use a, a bigger cart, a big drum full of material, and they buck it out of the drum. He'll place four or five uh, little pails that's still about the same amount that you would get in the, the two pails uh, before he starts to squeegee. And again, his squeegee pattern will be just the same. It's just that he doesn't uh, uh, have the, the luxury of the paper. See, he'll start not quite at an end, and he'll pull to that first corner. When he gets his coating to the corner, he's going to angle his squeegee a little and then pick it up. Then he'll strip it. And then he'll put his squeegee back on that line and angle his squeegee so that he can run a little ridge, a little bead of material, 
right down that side. Then he'll turn around, come back, he'll pick up that little ridge with the edge of his squeegee and head straight down the baseline uh, with his first pass. Again, a lot of times they'll leave a little ridge of material there, but the main thing is he's trying to get the coating right up onto the line. He'll do the same thing at this end. He's going to bring a squeegee to the corner at a little angle, pick it up, strip it usually, then he'll set it back down on the line, and then come down the sideline, leaving that little bead that he'll now pick up as he turns around and goes back. He'll make a sharp turn when he gets to that corner. He's even going to have to make another pass back, and then he'll start walking down. Notice he's not trying to take a lot of material. He's cleaning up right along that first pass. And he'll turn around and do the same thing going back. The pros do the same thing. They'll leave a long tail, as we call them. He'll pull a nice long tail out eventually, and then they work back and forth until they run out of that strip along the side. Once the strip is getting down to nothing, they'll pull another long tail out uh, on each side and then begin to fill in by squeegeeing back and forth all the way across. Have you noticed how little material he actually takes out of that row of material? Watch when he comes back. Now see he's pulling out that long tail or strip. Now he's going to come back, but watch his squeegee. If you look at where the, the coating is wet, he's actually taking very little out of that row. You're only taking less than a half squeegee of coating with each pass. If you take more than that, it'll float out beyond the edge and leave you with puddles that you'll cut into uh, creating ridges all over your coat. I think he's about ready to pull out another long tail here to watch. Did you see how he did that? He came all the way to the edge. Now here he goes down the line, uh, leaving that little bead of material that he can pick up and control and keep it inside that line. Then he'll turn and go straight across again. The other thing I want you to note is he's staying real close to the edge. He doesn't turn his corner until he gets right to the sideline. So the outer edge of his squeegee actually sweeps out right along the line. You see that? Now he'll just turn around and go back. And he's going to repeat this until, uh, again, he runs out of those long strips or tails. And then again, he'll pull out the, the tails and do the process all over again. By the way, that oval-shaped green splotch that you see on the cork that he's just getting ready to squeegee past is not part of this coat. It's uh, actually a patch uh, that he laid earlier and put a, a coat of color over it. We call that a feather coat or a skim coat uh, that he put down prior to placing his regular coatings. Uh, this helps hide any patching that you've done. Now you're watching Peter Whitnick, one of our uh, do-it-yourselfers, uh, making his first passes with the squeegee. 
you'll notice as he comes back, he's doing it just right. He's not taking a lot of material, which is very important. See how little is on his blade? It's better to take too little than too much. He's taking almost none at that point, but that's fine. Because that doesn't hurt the coating. Uh, if you let that stuff float out over the outer edge of your squeegee, uh, then you just have to go back and pick it up. There's really nothing else you can do. Now Peter and his son Chris, who you'll see a little later in this video, did a fantastic job uh, for first time squeegee years. Uh, but I wanted to show you a little mistake that he makes here. Everyone makes it when they start squeegeeing. See how far he is away from his sideline? Oops, he's trying to figure out how to get over there. You see that? Now he's kind of fumbling around trying to say, well, what am I going to do? Uh, what happened is he turned his corner way too soon. Uh, and that just kind of happens over time. That as you squeegee, you start turning sooner and sooner. And before you know it, you're nowhere near the sideline. You always want to wait till you're right at the sideline to make a sharp right turn or a sharp turn. Uh, to squeegee along that edge over there. He's going to come back and do it again uh, and we'll, we'll watch him again. This is just a repeat of the same clip. We'll watch him get over here and miss his turn. Here we go. Too far away from the sideline. To contrast this, let's look at our professional uh, one more time, uh, Paul Montemayor. We'll watch him as he uh, makes his passes. Watch how close his squeegee stays to the edge of that sideline. Watch this. There he goes. He actually even crosses over it a little bit. Uh, but that's what you'll see as he goes in both directions when he gets to that sideline. See how sharp his corner is there? He turns and sweeps out to the edge with his squeegee. Here we go one more time. Let's watch it coming back. Right to the edge before he makes his turn. Now we'll repeat this. Watch this again. I want to stress this. Right to the edge. Here we go. Right to the edge as he makes his turn. That's probably the single most important thing you can learn from this video. If you can start off like that, believe me, you'll save yourself a lot of grief uh, as you code. Now this is another little mistake that all squeegeeers make when they first start. See how he picks the squeegee up and just puts it down on the finished coat out there and he said, oops. What he has to do when he does that, he now has to sweep out well wide of where he set his squeegee down and make a pass all the way across and then come back again because that leaves what's called a tool mark when we set our wet squeegee down out on the court and there's nothing we can do other than go back and make a pass over that area before we continue squeegee. About the time you get to the service line, that first service line, it's time to make another pour. Uh, you'll notice a small row of material left, but it's a good place to make the pour, and you'll just pour one pail out all along that service line, uh, and then continue squeegeeing. Now you'll follow the same thing for the next pour. It'll be about at the net line squeegee that, the next pour at the next service line, and then the final pour, just pour barely what you need to get it out onto that paper. You'll see our professional uh, at this point, see how little material is left in his row? Now he's just going to keep squeegeeing until he gets very close to that paper. And once he gets close to the paper, he'll stop, pick up his excess with the shovel, just leaving enough to finish off onto the paper. Now you'll notice he uses a very large shovel. Uh, it's like a big coal shovel. The guys that use these drums generally like to use those because they can pick up a lot more. But just a regular flat shovel is fine 
and you'll put the excess that you pick up back in one of your, your pails. And once you finish this coat, let it dry for, well, in ideal conditions, let it dry for two hours. Uh, of course, leave the, all the masking paper down. Apply one more coat, just like this one, before you pull up your masking paper. You'll want to do a few things in preparation for your out-of-bounds coat. The first one is, again, uh, with uh, some wadded up paper or tape, create some plugs for your net post uh, sleeves if you're able to get your net post out. Uh, the next thing you want to do is place the 8-inch masking paper all the way around the inbounds. Again, splitting that uh, line, as a matter of fact, you can use the edge of your uh, inbounds coat or split that white line right in half with your tape and go all the way around. After you've done that, uh, you'll want to paint your border if you have one. This is just a flower watering pot that we've cut the little sprinkler off the top We've opened it up a little bit to pour paint in there. Uh, that makes it an easy way to pour out a nice bead of paint on your, on your border. And then you'll see all he has is a three inch paintbrush taped to a pole. Just saves your back. You can just use that to paint away. We paint the outside and then for do-it-yourselfers because you don't want to have to try to get too close to the edge of the fence with your squeegee, paint a nice little three to six inch strip on the inside as well. You can touch up under the fence. You see what Peter's doing there. Uh, and then you're really, you're ready for your coat. The graphic on the left shows the direction you'll be squeegeeing this particular court. Notice the arrow points to the first pour and the little yellow line that says start. Just below that is a gate, which is the only way out of this court. So we don't want to paint ourselves into the corner. We need to start at a point that we can go all the way around and then finish at the gate. The graphic on the right shows the pattern uh, starting at that point and then going all the way around. And then you can see uh, as you get near the gate, you see the squeegee pattern changes from that long sweeping curve uh, to the little short ones that point you towards the gate and take you right out the gate. The starting point that we just talked about is at the bottom of this frame. Chris has already made it almost all the way down the alley at this point. You'll notice this pattern is pretty much just a U shape. It's like an upside down U. Very much the same technique that you used on the inbounds. Uh, we pull out these long tails uh, and then we come back and fill them in. We just fill in the U until we run out of the tail and then we pull more tails out. We'll watch him as he does this. And by the way, this is Chris Whitnick, uh, Peter's son. At this point, uh, he has had about maybe 30 to 45 minutes experience squeegeeing. So you can see uh, he's picked it up very quickly.
Now, I don't know if you can tell from this particular uh, video, but he has already finished one alley and he's finishing a baseline and he's getting ready to turn again to go uh, all the way down this next alley. So you see how he made his pour? He, he made it in the direction that he's going to be squeezing down the alley, not along that area where he would be squeegeeing his, uh, more of his baseline. So now he's making his turn as he's squeegeeing. He's actually making the turn to go down the alley. At this point, Chris is almost all the way down his final alley, and all he'll have left is to make one more turn, squeegee uh, all the way down the, the last baseline, and then out the gate. You'll notice too, just outside the gate, we rolled out a little strip of that 24 inch paper. Uh, they had a little uh, area there, a bricked area that we wanted to protect. Uh, so you can use your paper also if you're coming off onto a sidewalk with your coating or any area that you want to, to keep the paint off, it's a, it's a good idea. We'll finish this video by showing Paul, our professional, squeegeeing his first coat around the out of bounds. See those long tails, as I call them? See how he's pulled those out? Now watch him. He's just going to fill that in. He's going to keep going back and forth over that upside down U, making those curved motions all the way until he pretty much runs out of those tails. And then he'll be ready for more. Now at this point, he's going to be ready to make a pour along that fence. He's finished that part of his alley. So it's now time for him to change directions. And you can see this is a square cornered court. He's going to need to make a pour all along that uh, fence so that he can now change his directions 90 degrees and squeegee the baseline. Once he gets that corner filled in, see how he pulls out that long tail. Now it's the same pattern, the very same that you would use on your inbounds. It's just a long pass with tails on either side, right along the, the baseline and right along the fence. And then he'll go back and fill those in. see now he has the two long tails and then he'll just fill those in. Same with the 
sideline. Here he is going down his alley. And he's going to pull a long tail as soon as he can get that material in the right place. A long tail along his sideline there. And then he'll just make those half circular motions back and forth, filling in the middle. There is one variable I should mention. On a hot day, you're going to have to shorten those tails. So you just pull out very short ones, fill in a couple of passes, and then pull some more short little tails out. On a very hot day, you may find you almost can't leave any tails at all. You have to just uh, squeegee from side to side and uh, keep moving your material on those sides just a little at a time. You'll notice in a minute that Paul's only gate was right in the middle of that one sideline. So he had to start at the gate, go all the way around, and now he's going to finish up by going out the gate. Just as when we finished up with the inbounds, Paul will pick up his excess coating before he uh, squeegees out the gate. Notice how he's stripping his squeegee. He's hitting it on a fairly dry area. That's so he can set his squeegee down out in the wet material. So each time he needs to set it down, he has to clean it. He has to strip it. That way it doesn't leave a tool mark where he sets it down in the wet paint. So he'll strip it again and then reach out and pull his last bit of coating off the court. And that brings us to the end of this video on applying sport coatings. I hope it will help with your project and please don't hesitate to give us a call if you have any questions whatsoever.